Okay, here we have the situation in my backyard. I've drawn on a couple of triangles here because we're going to investigate this a little bit with trigonometry. Um, what we want to do is figure out if there's a way that I can find out how many times further away this ball is than this ball just by going by the angles that I took from my theodolite on my um, from my theodolite app on my cell phone. So knowing what this angle is here and knowing what this angle is here, can I predict the relationship between this side length, which we're going to call x1, and this side length, which we're going to call x2? Is x2 two times bigger than x1? Is it three times? Is it four times bigger than x1? We want to see if I can predict that using only these two angles that I measured. So we're going to move over to the next slide and I've cleaned it up a little bit. It's a little easier to see when we don't have the picture in the background. Uh, and I've put on the two angle measurements that we have from my Theodolite app. So let's look at this triangle first. We're going to use some primary trig ratios here. So from this angle, I have this side, which is the opposite side, and this side, which is the hypotenuse. For our trig ratio, some of you may remember SOKATOA. That stands for sine opposite over hypotenuse, cos adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan opposite over adjacent. So you can see that the trig ratio that uses the O and the H is this one here. So it's the sine ratio. And sine, what so stands for, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, we're going to set it up to look like this. So sine of 36.2 equals opposite, which is H, over the hypotenuse, which is X1. Now I'm going to... Um, rearrange this to get h by itself. Uh, so we're going to isolate h by multiplying both sides by x1. And what that does is it gets rid of these x1s over here and I have h by itself and that equals x1 times the sine of 36.2. Now we're going to do the same thing in this big elongated triangle. It's the same relationship because if we take a look at this angle here this is the opposite side and this is the hypotenuse. So we're still using sine. So doing exactly the same thing we set up sine of 10.8 equals opposite over hypotenuse and then multiply both sides by x2 which gives us x2 sine of 10.8. Now what I want is the relationship between x1 and x2 so I have to try and get these two things uh, this x1 and this x2 into the same um, same expression. And the way we do that is by noticing that uh, H is the same in both triangles. Um, the flat earthers say that the sun moves away, stays the same height, but it moves away from us during the day. Um, and that causes it to look lower in the sky. And we can see that that's plausible here because this angle is smaller than this one. So as it gets further away, this angle that we see it at is smaller. But since H is the same, then I know that these two expressions are the same. So I can put them together like this. Uh, so that I get the x1 and x2 in the same expression. Now what I want to do is get what x2 divided by x1 is. Remember I want to know how many times bigger x2 is than x1. So I'm going to divide both sides by x1, but I also want to know what strictly x2 divided by x1 is, so I don't want this sine of 10.8 there either. So I'm going to divide both sides by x1 and the sine of 10.8. And what that will do is it will get rid of x1 divided by x1 is just 1 because anything divided by itself is 1 so those just cancel out. And same thing over here sine of 10.8 divided by sine of 10.8 is also just 1 so those are gone. So now that those are gone I know what x2 divided by x1 is. It's this ratio. Now this ratio are just numbers. Sine of 36.2 is just a number. It's stored in your calculator. So I can just plug this into my calculator to find out how many times bigger x2 is than x1. And I've already done that here. Here's a little screenshot of when I did it on my calculator. So the sine of 36.2 divided by the sine of 10.8 is in fact 3.15 approximately which means that, whoops, 3.2, um, that should be 3.15 as well. Let's just stroke that out, put 3.15, rounded that to one decimal place instead of two. Um, and so we know that 
x2 is 3.15 times the um, length of x1. So the ball must be 3.1 times more distant in order to lower from 36.2 to 10.8. Now, if a ball, when something moves 3.1 times further away from us, we can expect it to look 3.15 times smaller. So how much smaller did the ball get? Well, I just so happen to have a picture that have both balls in it at the same time, so we can measure how much smaller one ball is than the other. So let's do that. Now that we know how much smaller one ball is than the other, and there's the pixels that we measured on the screen, um, we can see how much bigger or how much further away one is than the other. So how much smaller did this ball get? Let's actually do that division. 328.23 divided by 109.19 is 3.01. Now we were expecting it to get to be 3.1 five times smaller and it only got 3.01 times smaller but that's not much of a difference it's only about a four percent error so that's pretty close now why was there an error because we're measuring measuring is never perfect there's no such thing as a perfect measurement there is always some type of error so where, let's think about it where might we have seen some error in what I did here so the possible causes for error the two balls may not have been perfectly level with each other. I think this is probably the most uh, likely reason. Uh, it was really hard to get those two balls on my fence without actually poking some holes in my fence. I was using um, twist ties and, and zip ties and everything else trying to put the two balls on my fence and getting them perfectly level with each other. And it was just a little bit difficult. My fence is not perfectly level on its own, neither is my backyard. Um, so I think that is the most likely cause for error. The theodolite may also not have been cal quite calibrated correctly. You have to calibrate the theodolite to level in the first place, and I tried to do that with some leveling and things like that to get my theodolite perfect, but it may not have been quite calibrated perfectly. And the theodolite may not have targeted the exact center of the ball. It's really hard on that little tripod um, to get it set the way I want, so I may not have targeted exactly the center of both balls. So that may have um, put us off just a tiny little bit. And when you're off a little bit with angles, it makes your, um, your other measurements off a little bit more. Now, a lot of flat earthers will say that that's the perspective view. And the side view and the perspective view can't, be, uh, can't give you exactly the same thing. Um, so you can't actually make measurements in the perspective view and get the side view. Well, I'm going to show you that it's exactly the same. So we're going to measure angles from the side view in the photograph and see if that makes a difference. So now that we've measured the angles right on the photograph itself, we're going to go through this again and see how, um, how it measures up in the side view to see if um, we actually do get a side length that is that much further away from us when we actually are looking at it from the side view. So uh, I'm just going to th go through this very quick. I'm not going to go through it exactly the same as I did before. So we're going to do the small triangle first. So the sine of 38 equals h over x1, times in both sides by x1. We get x1 sine 38 equals x, h. And further away, 
sine of 11.5 equals h over x2. Multiplying both sides by x2, we get x2 sine of 11.5 equals h. Once again, since h stays the same, um, both of those trying expressions are equal. And if I want to get x1 divided by x2 completely by itself, I have to divide both sides by x1 times the sine of 11.5. Now once again, what that does is x1 divided by x1 is 1 and 11, sine of 11.5 and sine of 11.5 is 1, so it gets rid of those things. We can cancel them out. And we get sine of 38 over the sine of 11.5 equals x1 divided by x2. And if I actually plug these into the calculator, which I've done over here, when I plug those into the calculator, I get about 3.09. So that means that x2 is 3.09 times bigger than x1. Now that's a little bit closer. When I did it in the perspective view, I got 3.15. And when I did it in the side view, I got 3.09. Now that is very, very close to being exactly the same thing. Um, but what is it if I actually measure? So I did some direct measurements on both, uh, in both of those things. I did it when I set it up. I actually used a tape measure. So I'll just go back to my first slide here and show you that what I did was I tried to um, put my tape measure here and measure up to this ball and put my tape measure here and measure up to this ball and I was trying to do it on my own so I was hooking the tape measure here there was slack in the tape measure it was not easy measuring on an angle with a tape measure is not a good thing to do but I tried it um, and I'll show you what those measurements were when I did it with the tape measure the ball that was far away was 3.76 and the ball that was close up was 1.22 meters so that's 3.08 times farther for the other ball. Now remember what we were looking at for the angles our, um, our perspective view gave us 3.15 and our, um, our side view gave us 3. Oh, ooh, that looks all weird. Our side view gave us 3.09 so we're actually very close to both of them on the side view. Now I also measured pixels in the picture. So by measuring the pixels in the picture, how far away one was from the other, uh, I get 3.11. This is probably the more accurate, it's more accurate than a tape measure anyway. So 3.11. Now remember, the side view gave us 3.09 and the perspective view gave us 3.15. So the actual is basically right smack dab in between those two. So what can we conclude from all of this? Well, first of all, that it doesn't matter whether we're talking about the perspective view or the side view, or we're getting exactly the same answers. So the next time a flat earther tells you that you can't use a perspective view um, when you're and draw a picture from the side, uh, that's just ridiculous. You can measure angles from um, one view and have them be exactly the same angles that you would measure from the side. Um, but also in this conclusion, both angle, the angle and the size we see something above us is dependent upon the same thing. It's distance from us. So what that means is that something cannot get lower without also getting smaller. This is a trigonometric relationship and it works at all distances. Okay, that is what perspective is. Do not let a flat earther tell you otherwise. And lastly, flat earthers are going to have to find a way to explain it away with magic atmosphere because perspective is a mathematical relationship and it just won't work. You cannot have something get farther away from you. It cannot look lower in the sky and not look smaller as well.